When Obama created DACA, he promised that the Affordable Care Act, or Obamacare, would not apply to illegal aliens in the U.S. Remember? I know Joe does. He was sitting right there. The reforms, the reforms I'm proposing would not apply to those who are here illegal. Hear that? And when a Republican screamed out, you lie, way back in, I think that was 12, 11 years ago, right? Longer than that, 2009. Thank you, my producer. Republicans were chastised the next day in the media for screaming, you lie. I forget which congressman that was, but that's correct. Back in 09, they knew Obama and Biden were lying. And now here we go. Because Joe Biden's new plan... <laughs> is to allow them to use Obamacare. Center for Immigration Studies researchers estimate the cost of opening Obamacare and Medicaid to illegal aliens will cost the taxpayers about $4,600 per illegal alien. At this rate, Biden and Obamacare and this DACA and the aliens are going to end up costing us $2.8 billion every year just for that. And I bring it all up because yesterday Biden announced his plan to open the Affordable Care Act to hundreds of thousands of illegal DACA people. You don't believe me? Roll it. So today my administration is announcing our plan to expand health coverage for DACA recipients by allowing them to enroll in the plan through the Affordable Care Act or through Medicaid. Health care should be a right, not a privilege. My administration has worked hard to expand health care. And today, more Americans have health insurance than ever. Today's announcement is about giving DACA recipients the same opportunity. Here now to sound off on what I believe should be illegal. I don't know how a president can actually divert our cash and give health care to illegals. Florida Congressman Matt Gates. You lie. Who was that back in 09? I forget, Matt. But they got it right. Congressman Joe Wilson certainly vindicated in the events that have unfolded very damaging to our country, unfortunately. And the way you have to think about this is that the Biden administration is building some very expensive magnets to draw people across our border illegally. And I am old enough to remember when an administration wanted to use taxpayer dollars they actually, for this purpose, they actually had to go to Congress right. and get a bill passed. But you see Joe Biden usurping the Congress to have this massive expenditure of cash. It is not authorized. And it's not just the dollar amount. It's the utilization of services that are intended for Americans. I heard heartbreaking stories of American families, legal residents of our country, who couldn't have their babies in the NICU the neonatal intensive care unit in their local hospital and often had to travel 170 miles Mm -hmm. from Yuma, Arizona to Phoenix, Arizona. So right now, the American taxpayer is already paying for health care for the illegals. We're paying for it in our emergency services and intensive care services and in our NICUs. But now, with what you just heard from Joe Biden, You not only won't be able to get into an emergency room, you won't be able to get in to see a primary care physician, a specialist, because Mm. that is going to be overrun by people who are not in our country legally. Wow. So what can Republican House members do? You guys have the purse strings, but we don't have the Senate. We don't have the White House. How in the hell can we at least defund this, stop this from happening? Or can he actually just sign the executive order and we're screwed for two years? And you heard the numbers. Unfortunately, we have a four seat majority and we have a number of Republicans who still believe in amnesty, who are still trying to push for DACA. And so uh, we are not in a position right now where I think we could pass a major immigration reform bill or uh, an asylum reform bill that we need to save the country. Here's what I've said. I don't care if we have the votes or not. We have to put the legislation on the floor that says people are either detained or turned away. We cannot allow the asylum loophole to swallow the entire American immigration system. And that is what is happening right now. We need to detain if we have the beds or turn away, return to home country, return to a safe third country if asylum is going to be sought in the United States. We don't just parole those people into the, into America. So I, int- I expect we'll be having votes 
on these matters in the House Judiciary Committee in the coming weeks. And we don't yet have the votes on the floor to pass it. But you know what, Dan, if it took us 15 votes to elect a Speaker of the House, I don't mind if we have to put bills up and see who votes for them and who votes against yes. them. And there will be political consequences and there will be consequences to our nation. That's, that's, that's exactly it. Let's bring daylight to those rhinos you just discussed that will probably jump ship and go over to the Democrats on this vote. That way the American people can see who the hell's doing that. So when they look at their paycheck and they go, oh, that came out for my health care and illegals are going to get it free. They'll go, let's vote that a whole out of office. Uh, Matt, I need to switch gears on a couple things real quick because I did want to get your take on it because uh, you're the first member of Congress to come on since it all broke. And that, of course, is the news cycle story of the week. And that's the young 21-year-old airman who allegedly leaked these documents on that gamer website Discord. Now, earlier in the program, I spoke with uh, Colonel Stuart Scheller. He's obviously very outspoken about the military, the Pentagon, and this regime like he was a couple years ago after Afghanistan. And he and I said, as veterans, look, we don't want anybody getting put in harm's way, and if leaked documents do that, don't leak them. But don't we have whistleblower protections in place in our government that if you think the American people need to see something that the government's lying to them about, then it's okay, or maybe not okay, but at least somewhat acceptable. And I'm looking at the the Chelsea Bradley Manning thing from years ago and going, Obama commuted that sentence for someone who leaked thousands to WikiLeaks. This guy put out a couple pages because he thought he was being cool and he's 21. I don't know that we throw him away for 50 years and think he's some like big treasonous espionage spy or something. Well, I don't want to prejudge the facts or motivations in the case. I don't think that would be fair to anyone involved. Uh, I will say that this case seems to present far different than the Stu Scheller matter. I was very public, even in committee, presenting amendments for the House Armed Services Committee to have Stu Scheller's back against an administration that seemed to be trying to suppress any type of, of reasoned dissent and reasoned critique of their improper actions. In, in this matter, you appear to have information released that could have put people in danger, our allies, our service members, and to the extent that that could be possible, I think we have to acknowledge that there has to be a better way for people who have concern with how things are going or who uh, observe what they think are corrupt acts to be able to present that viewpoint. Leaking information that is classified regarding our military activities and the military activities of our allies is not something that I would ever cheerlead. Uh, I don't think that this is some mastermind espionage operation. I think it is it is evidence that we have to have a better process to make the federal whistleblower system work. I'll give you an example. The FBI whistleblowers who have come forward to present evidence of corruption at the Department of Justice yep. were smeared by Democrats. They were lied about in the mainstream media. And when people see that system used and the people punished, oftentimes they seek the anonymity of going beyond the federal whistleblower system. And then uh, you have results that are outside the law. Gotcha. And I'll just add that the Pentagon general that gave the briefing, I think yesterday on the docs or day before, did say that none of the documents he released put anybody in harm's way. So I'll just say that. Not that that kid knew that at the time he leaked. But it didn't. I just wanted to point that out because no, that's that's a that's a refreshing revelation. Yep. And again, I served and I had TS clearance, Matt. So I get it. And you shouldn't be doing it. Then I look at this war and the hundred eighteen billion (laughs) dollar amount. And God knows what it'll be another year from now if Biden gets his way. And I'm like, the American people should know, though, that Ukraine's not winning like they say that they're winning. Anyway, um, and there won't be any yep. consequences, by the way, for the people who lie about that. Right. I think that's what frustrates patriotic <laughs> Americans, that there never seem to be consequences for people that do the really big, bad things that do cost lives. And then when you have someone in this situation, you and I both know they're going to throw the book at this young man. Well, then when Trump wins, like I said earlier in the program, he can commute his sentence or pardon him just like Barack Obama did with Bradley <clears throat> Chelsea Manning. Remember that? He commuted 28 years off of 35, and he gave thousands of documents to WikiLeaks. So just keep that in mind, folks. Matt Gates, as always, thank you, sir. Have a good weekend. Thank you.